will tell you a story not found in many history books. A story many would call myth or fantasy. Years ago, a great war waged between mankind and the soulless dark elves of the Forest of Scythe. They asked for peace and resolution, and in turn, the dark elves mercilessly struck again. They would not rest until every human had been murdered. Their evil spread like wildfire. Kingdoms lost under the Shroud of Night. In desperation, the land of Tirisplein expelled its last mission of help. And so, our story begins. still alive. My lady, would you care for the honor? Why, Your Majesty? What was your business here? Do not overstate your place, Kador. Her Majesty will address you at her pleasure. My sincere apologies, Your Majesty. I must admit I have never been in the presence of the High Court. It is an honor. There's no need for pleasantries here, my lord. These are desperate times and dire circumstances. You may communicate freely. My lady is too generous. 
to answer your question. My father charged me with traveling to Bagnor Brim. I was to beg Lord Blackthorn to aid in our war. I see. A wise mission. His army is larger than ours by several legions, and he has heavy cavalry. Lord Blackthorn will not help us. Why do you suppose this? He feels the fight with the Dolkafar is our own. Strange tune for a king's knight. Yes, the battle is ours for a short time, but should we fall, does anybody truly believe that the elves will stop? They will continue until every human breathes their last breath. Those not directly confronted with the war, my lady, often lack the will to fight. It is not the will, but the courage. Lord Blackthorn's an able and intelligent commander. I will give him the courage. His strength is in the art of negotiations. It would not surprise me to discover that he's already agreed to a peace with the elves to avoid confrontation. So you suggest that he will do nothing to help us? Apathy is evil's greatest ally, my lady. My lady is quite bedizened. Her dress may be appropriate for the king's court, but certainly not for the voyage home. Thank you. So how did you find yourselves in that forest? We were separated from our division. So your division must be nearby. Perhaps they can accompany me on the rest of my journey. The roads aren't safe. The division is no more. We're the only survivors. Where was this battle? Errol. They've taken Errol? And Tin again. Oh. Then they're less than a week from Tyrus Blaine. Days, actually. We must reach Bagna Brim. It's our only hope. Of course. I will do as commanded. But it is an assignment from which there will be no return. We can dispatch a few rogues and blackguards. But if we are to encounter an entire legion, there is very little we can do. Then we must go around them, back through that forest. My lady, that is the forest of Scythe. And? Evil reigns. It is home to the necromancer Freya and her fire drake. I know, I've seen it. What? Moments before you arrived. No one has ever seen the dragon and survived to tell the tale. Tell us of the beast, Your Highness. It stands taller than the ashlar that surrounds our kingdom. Its eyes are hollow and full of evil, its flesh that of a serpent. Does it truly breathe fire? Indeed, as you or I breathe air. But when it approached, the elves remained still. It only attacked when I turned to run. Then it is possible to move through the forest undetected? Possible. But unlikely. My lady, I would be remiss not to advise you that your proper place is back at the castle. The people there view you as a symbol of hope. Perhaps you can rally a resistance, prevent a surrender. Symbols must fight. The wars have made you hard, and for this my deepest apologies. But my father's a wise and great leader. Yes. However, it was a tactical mistake to allow the Dolkafar the time to regroup. We should have crushed them when we had the chance. Now they are better armed and view our mercy as weakness. Eloquent words and fiery speeches do not win battles, my lord. Armies do. We need Lord Blackthorn's support. And you will help me to attain it. As you wish. He is a good man still. I hope you do not view his contention as a weakness of character. I do not. I believe all men are entitled to speak their minds, and I admire his convictions whether or not I agree with them. He is truly correct in his assessment of you. 
You will one day make a just and fair queen. <sighs> Although you've provided me with new clothes, I seem to not have a weapon. Are you versed in swordsmanship? I can handle a blade. Where did you acquire those skills? My father was very strict in my education. In addition to my courtly duties, he educated me in military strategy and combat. I apologize for questioning you. This blade was a gift from my father. Let it now be a gift to you. Thank you. Then, we shall press forward. every step. Speak never above a whisper. Understood? I know of this place. I've been here before. In dreams. Does your majesty wish to change her orders? amount of text or oral tutoring will prepare you for what you're about to see. Your courage must come from within. Well, no time to footle. This place is not likely to become less terrifying. Dorkal file were once a good race, weren't they? It was this very forest that drove them to evil and madness. Do you hear that? I hear nothing. Precisely. For a while, would he say love? Is 
Shot Kang Fu. Get off your knees. You care to explain your ambush? You never can be too careful. The forest aside, it's a dangerous place. So you would attack anyone who crosses your path, friend or foe? Effective way of finding out which side you're on, wouldn't you say? <sighs> Let us continue. Ah, uh, your lady friend seems a mite pretty quaffed to be a blaggard or a forest dweller. Looks to be royalty to me. She is simply our traveling companion. We have no business with you, so we should be on our way. Two of the king's elite rangers and a young, attractive companion travel in the forest of Scythe. It's very odd. Indeed. Mind your business, sir. Do not engage this fool. Fool? <laughs> Foolish enough to take your party, friend. Believe me, if I wanted you dead, I could have it. Perhaps you were at a different battle than I. <laughs> Ye travelers are ill prepared to navigate the forest. What if, instead of us band of fools, you encountered Dolkel for Centurions? Or possibly the Fire Drake itself? We do not need your assistance if that is your question. If I may, Sir Knight, I believe you do. How is it that you find yourselves in this place? Your picks far from your land. We have come to claim the ultimate prize. The head of the dragon itself. What experience do you have in such matters? <laughs> <laughs> have you not heard of the Kensington Basilisk? No. A dragon far fiercer than this one slayed by us. Aye, my lady. The basilisk claim the lives of thousands. Mark my words, you will not survive the day without our expertise. The princess holds a weapon. Does she know how to use it? <laughs> I can handle myself. Ah, to be sure, to be sure. But uh, judging by your attire, I suspect it was an impromptu mission. Her Majesty would never travel during the wartime without a compliment to protect her. Aye. Well, he's in a tomb, man. Aye, aye. Our mission is covert. Ah. A mission of importance. It would be our honor to assist you. Very well, then. You're welcome <laughs> to join us. Uh, Your Highness, must protest. Well, we could assist you for a small fee. A pittance, really. What do you have in mind? I don't know. Uh, perhaps a small parcel of land or title. A pit barbarian wants land and title. You would have to swear your allegiance to me and my father. Exchange for land? Without question. My lady. What does my lady think we need the help of these... weavers? They know the area. We're already undermanned, especially if we encounter the dragon. But a larger party increases the chance of detection. Bah! No, it doesn't. See, has quite enough to sneak up on you, friend. Blind look. Eh, call it what you will. Now, Her Majesty, excuse me, doesn't prefer to part with land? Then perhaps she and I can discuss another form of compensation in private. Enough! You have offended the princess's honor. She doesn't look offended to me. <laughs> Your codes and traditions. There be nothing here, lad. I killed a hundred men if it was one with this blade. And I wouldn't hesitate to slit your throat right here. Are you finished with your antics, boy? I'm handy, you filthy bust. Stop the foodle and ask the fucking question. I'm willing to sacrifice my life for my princess's honor. Are you willing to sacrifice yours in defense of your ego? You seem a bit outclassed. <laughs> Stop the foodle and answer the bloody question. <laughs> Nay. <clears throat> I don't intend to die this day. Or any other for that matter. Good. You've proved your skills. In theory at least. Now, if your highness wishes to engage your assistance, I shall honor a request. By spurring all your life. Are we agreed? We are. 
Then, you will come in and assist us through Sai. When we arrive safely in the court of Lord Blackthorn in Bagnabryn, then you will be bestowed with the land and title you desire. Excellent. I'm Gareth Morholt. I'm Sagomo. My blade is yours, my lady. I am called Naga. It's a pleasure to serve you. Now, that's settled. Shall we press forward? To Bagnabryn? Behind the trees! Behind the trees! This way. He's not my squire, but my lieutenant. He's trained as I am. It's not a mystery, then, why your army is such a dire possession. What do you know of it? Enough. Should you survive, my kingdom will become your kingdom. You, too, shall be called upon to defend it. I'll do so on my own terms. I'll follow blindly, she and the Kitlin do. You must man. Do I? Do you profess to be my teacher? <laughs> it would take two lifetimes to teach a dolt like you what I've learned. I like you. Quick with wit and a blade. It's a pity, really. Why both of those are wasted on those that don't respect it. Artemir! What happened? She just collapsed. She was talking. Can you continue? Yes. Good. Come now. Made enough noise to call a horde of those beasties.
your business here? You are the trespassers here. I should ask you the same question. You're in a position to ask nothing. You have yet to see the depth of my power. I implore all of you to rethink your actions. What is your business with us, Wedge? You have entered my domain. The Forest of Scythe belongs to me. Then you are the necromancer Freya. How do you know who she is? Only the dragon's master would feel safe in its forest. If only it were that simple. I am not the dragon's master. Far from it. Its power usurps mine. Its evil knows no bounds. It is beyond the control of any human or necromancer. Yet you stay here? You don't fear it? Its fate and mine are intertwined. In bringing it to life, I gave a part of my essence. And through my blood flows the essence of the beast. And you two are able need to be put down. I prefer dealing with him. He appears to be a man of honor, not a brute who sees the world in absolutes. You want to deal with him all you wish? When you're done speaking in your half sentences and riddles, then you can deal with me. Intriguing creature. I don't know if I should kill you. I'll keep you as pet. Freya. I'm Alora Veneer. Princess of Tyrus Blaine. Ah. My diplomat. Quite right. We need to cross this forest. If it is indeed your land, we apologize for our trespass. But our mission is urgent and of great importance. Such strength in your voice. A shame it does not reflect. In your eyes rest fear, fear and uncertainty. Please, I beg you. Dear child, you best make better companions, for irrational men will lead to your doom. What do you mean? Despite seeing a small display of my sorcery, they are all ready to attack. Your protector's hand on his glaive, the young knave has thoughts of slitting my throat. As well as other thoughts. Thoughts of love. A happier time after this all deep. Get out of our heads, witch! Your mission is noble, if not foolhardy. I see into the future, a gift and a curse. Some of you will not survive to see another day. Uh, another threat. Not by my hand, Gareth Mordhold. If not by you, then how? The beast. The beast will claim some of you. Your plan to avoid it will not work. The dragon must be confronted and defeated if you are to continue to bag Norbrin. You must confront your fears of the beast as you confront the fears that haunt you. The dragon plague is my doing. I have waited here for decades, hoping for someone with enough valor or stupidity. Challenge the creature. Are you the ones I have waited for? We are the brave, not the stupid. One does not exist without the other. 
Will you help us? To right the wrong that you feel that you've created? I am a necromancer, and yet you appear to read thoughts. I can sense it from your words. I cannot engage it. I can only offer my guidance and protection. Then we will gladly accept both. This is my leash, Damara, the last of the Fae. Alkuwe Ishlana, that means I shall fight by your side. I will give my life to protect yours. We shall offer our protection. A storm is coming. The dragon will wait as it passes. Listening. We too shall wait. I have never been too fond of necromancers. Nor I. Do you know of the dragon's movement? This is how she sleeps. Resting. You suppose she cast takes great energy. I see. That watch? It's holding back information? What do you mean? Why isn't the king send dragon slayers? He's got a legion of men at his command. Then why show herself to us and offer her support? And perhaps we are destined to slay the beast. She said she knows the future. Necromancers know a possible future. A man's fate is his own. Determined by his actions. Speak beyond the prying ears of others. The dragon was your creation. Why? I know your father quite well. Despite his allegiance to the new religion, he often sought my guidance. My father commanded you to create the your dragon? Your father cannot command me. No one can. Me, pleaded with me to invoke the dragon. For what purpose? The weapon. A weapon and a deliverance. A way to end the orphan threat. A permanent solution. My father's a good man, and all he's ever wanted is peace. He would not ask you to exterminate an entire race of beings. True. We had hoped the mere existence of the dragon at our command would be enough to deter the Dokul fire. The creature could not be tamed. Once brought to life, its appetite became insatiable. And uh, I can no longer control it. It came to rest here, in this wicked place. Why does it not slay the elves? On occasion it does. Serves no master but itself. Caitlin is right. Killing the dragon? Maybe one of our birthrights? And I, Teki, you believe it to be yours? Aye, I do.
my lady needs some company. He cannot see me. Of course. Please. He oversteps his place. True love. Flourish almost any place. More woods to live by from Gareth Moorhall. Nay, I heard of some place. I think from a bard I once robbed. The sorceress's words troubled you. Yes. What do you fear? Speak your heart. He can't be trusted. I know that one day my father will pass, and I will be queen. And a fine leader you shall make. I challenged Lord Artemir earlier, but his words are true. My father has made mistakes. Mistakes that may cost us our kingdom. You're not doomed to make your father's mistakes. That's not what I fear. I've seen the destruction caused by our enemies. Since the day of my birth, we've been engulfed by war. I fear that I won't retain his benevolence. You lack the capacity for tyranny, my lady. Do I? I resisted slaying that elf, not because I couldn't bring myself to do it, but because that was the only thing that I wanted to do. There was no mercy in my heart. I dropped that blade because I feared giving it my anger and my bloodlust. A truly great leader finds a balance between the two. Mercy is reserved for those that deserve it, those that would return it. Ruthlessness is reserved for those without remorse. When do you know the difference? Something you feel. What of the sorcerer's words to you? What is this love that she talks of? <laughs> my lord, you're blushing. You overstate my emotion. And my title. You're not yet knighted? No. Something that could easily be remedied, saving Her Majesty's life's deserving task. Thank you. If you do not wish to tell me of your personal affairs, I understand. But know this, whoever she is, she's very fortunate to have such a man devoted to her. And indeed, I am devoted. My life is hers. Land and title. Can you believe it? <laughs> it was Gareth who negotiated the deal. We shall be lucky to get squatter's rights in his kingdom. Hmm. Good point. And I, as a woman, am unable to hold land myself. Well, if uh, you and I were to be married... <laughs> Not even 100 spades of land could entice me to that, my friend. You are so cruel.
Artemir, why do you let the sorceress lead? She is the one most familiar with the terrain. Understood. But clearly, it's not the quickest way through the forest. You question my judgment? I do. I question your honesty. Where are you taking us? As I have told, the dragon must be confronted and defeated. Why? We should avoid it at all cost. Princess is our charge, not to feed this dragon. You do not wish to meet your destiny? Stop speaking in riddles and half-truths. Why us? Why do we have to face this dragon? Amongst one of you is the key to its destruction. The dragon's destruction more than anything will ensure the safety of your kingdom. Who? Which one of us is it? Only in the fray of battle will all become clear. To reveal the details of the future to those not ready to accept it will only lead to disaster. Fair enough. We pledge to assist the princess, not you. I say we make haste for the edge of the forest. Aye. Tis true. Freya can be trusted. Gareth, what was your plan to kill the dragon? She's put you under some sort of spell. Your judgment's clouded. I speak what I believe to be correct. The sorceress has defended us, assisted our safety. To mistrust her now will be foolhardy. The key to slaying the beast is immobilizing it. First attacking its wings, then its tail. Its tail? The dragon uses the tail for balance. The damaged wings and a tail cannot fly away. Tell me. Is that how you slayed the other creature? It is. Please, continue. Once it is trapped, it becomes a battle of attrition. Small target attacks, always aiming at its heart. But this one is a fire drink. How do you propose we avoid its breath? It is tricky, without question. There's always a moment before it attacks, while it summons the fire from its belly. When you see that, that's the time to take cover. The fire drake can only bring forth the blaze every few minutes or so. In between attacks is when we strike. It's always best to attack it when it rests, ideally in its lair. Its defenses will be down. Is that where you're leading us? Of then. course. We shall press forward.
Thank you for honoring your word. Believe me, it'd be less hasty to do so with that promise of land and title. Defending our kingdom means nothing to you? Defending my livelihood means more. Then you're truly in this only for yourself. Every man is always for himself. You can use your flowery words of duty and fighting for a cause, but reality is much different. You are wrong. Artemir and I have pledged our allegiance to Save your words. The only reason you stand here now is because it's the only way for a commoner like yourself to attain any kind of standing. These are rules created by your beloved king and princess, enforced by their implied rules of tyranny. There's no such thing as a good ruler. The very position has evil at its heart. I have sworn to fight for the ideals of my kingdom. I would not do that if I did not believe them. You mean to tell me you'd risk your life defending the beliefs of others? Think for yourself, man. I do. You don't. From the cradle to the grave, people like you are taught to obey. Not I. That makes you less of a man. Does it? Maybe the princess should decide which one of us is more of a man, eh? Come now, Kitlin. The only reason you stand here, defending her honor, is the hope that one day you might get taste what is most certainly her sweet nectar. That is enough! Come now, boy. We've been here before. You pledge to follow me. Do so. I pledge to protect the princess, not follow ye. This is not your destiny, Gareth Morholt. The dragon will not fall by your hand. Well, there you have it. From the coveted mouth of the wet. You came here to fight the dragon. Why do you now wish to avoid that conflict? Because for a moment, however small, I began to worry about her safety. I've become my new charge. Despite your silly notions of duty and honor, I have my own. You're leading her to her death, tussling with this dragon. There's no place for her. I'm not gonna stand here and watch as her protectors become her executioners. So protect me. We do not need him. If that is what you truly believe, why don't you remain and finish your mission? Because I cannot collect payment from a dead woman, later of a dead kingdom. You are not a man of honor, by any definition. And to think that I thought differently, I was so terribly wrong. Nobody's perfect. Not even you. Come on. Well, come on. Let him leave. I will remain, my lord. A man of true character. We would be honored to have your sword. The land and title shall be yours. Bloody fool. Thank you. Thank you. He has made his choice. We must press forward. is not in its lair. 
We shall wait for its return. Close enough to watch its movements. Far enough away for it not to sense us. Until now, my eyes have never seen a dragon. To think, I will soon be charged with slaying one. Your false humility is quite impressive. You believe yourself to be the one to slay the beast. But of course. She tells us to wait and walk forward. The site calls her. She will return when it is time to continue. Shalalaniar, Yam Bargush. I. Horana Nate. He looked to Var. He looked to Quantar. Mana Marth. Mana Agarth. Knat. Yadan Mam. He ordered Quantar. Tried. To go to Var. No, so I seldom. You rock men man mel mels. Dim. I'm bad try gold. Try a mar. A look as day. Hilia. Why did Gareth truly leave? What? It's because they have never slayed a dragon. He speaks the truth. What of the basilisk? A moment of good luck. We entered the creature's lair to find it already dead. We severed its head and dragged it back to Kensington. Which was no small task, if I may add. So what was your plan here? We were to hide in the forest for a week or two, then return to the village with wild tales of the dragon's power. And we would ask for more gold to defeat it. They would pay, and we would be on our way. So everything you have told us about defeating the creature is also a lie? No, 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 mate. Those are facts. How do you know? We read of it in an old tome dating back to the time of the Druids. <gasps> Remarkable. He did not lie of his feelings or his intentions. I have known him since I was a child. It was his intent to honor his pledge to see you to Bagnabrin. You make him out to be some sort of a hero. He, he is a rogue and a blackguard. He is a good man and a loyal friend. He just sees the world differently than you do. Tell me of your vision. Is it of our future? Tell me of your vision. Perhaps. Tell me! Tell me! Serve your commands for your subjects! Wait. Kador must avoid acts of heroism without thought. In 
this fight or to follow Lord Artemir's orders. Just as if you were on the battlefield. Of course, my lady. What did she say to you? Nothing. I would not question Her Majesty's honesty. But I see falsehood in your eyes. She said we're to be successful. Victory is our destiny. But her prophecy came with a warning. Something is not right. Invocation and the blow to the beast have weakened her. Not a mortal blow to either of us. But it is weakened. Yes. Then we must strike quickly before the wound has time to heal. Can you move? Must act quickly and finish the beast off. I do not want to die. I want to live. You shall. We will be victorious. Do not surrender now. How are we supposed to defeat such a thing? Together, we can. 
Look at me! We won the first battle. There will always be loss. Do not let his sacrifice be in vain. Good. How do we slay the beast? Send Veneer into me. Shall remain here. If we do not return by sundown, you will tell the king of our plight. I shall not. My place is with you and her highness. Are you defying a direct order? Yes. I swore the same oath as you, my lord. And the best way to fulfill that oath is to do as I say. You risked your life saving mine during the battle. Allow me the right to repay that debt. I did what anyone would do for a fellow soldier. You did what anyone would do for a friend. You have taught me everything you know. You need my blade during this battle. And if we fail, how will the king learn of it? A foolish question. We will not fail. We cannot. I share your bravery, but not your optimism. There is a reason we survived. Our fates were sealed during that battle. We are on borrowed time. You know as well as I do that we should have been vanquished with the others. Destiny has led us here, to this moment. It is not optimism, my friend, but faith. Then your faith is much stronger than mine, my friend. I have enough for the both of us. Take this. What is this? The time is right, you would know. Should I not give it to Lord Artemis? No. Dear child, this is your destiny. I cannot do this. I do not have the courage. I will surely fail. It resides deep inside of you. It is your birthright. By my hand, the dragon, and my solution. I don't understand. Your father is the king, done to ensure your ascension to the throne. But I am your mother. The same blood that flows through the dragon flows through you. You have its strengths without its weaknesses. You can't leave me. The fates are intertwined. The dragon is vanquished. So shall I. And your father. And know this, the dragon will do all it can to stop you. It knows of your power. Do you understand? I understand. Knight him. Should he not survive, give him that honor in death.
Rise. Sabane, defender of the realm. You know my fate. And I accept it. I do not. We are all masters of our own fates. Today we will transcend fear and vanquish evil. We shall shape whatever future we desire together. Starting with this day and every day from this one forward. Today shall be remembered. Not as a day of tragedy or sadness, but as a day of hope. You have heard our majesty. The dragon is ours. Long live King Veneer! Long live King Veneer. We must strike now, while the wound is fresh. I will create the first diversion by charging it head on. Kador. When it focuses its attention on me, attack, your highness. Wait for the right moment, then strike.
stay. Oh! Austin! Dignity, Kitlin. It's a good death. Aye. Only these bastards. Shall we take the hell with us? Wait!
to not die of old age. The sorceress Freya was laid to rest, her soul allowed to move to the next world. Lord Artemir was given a traditional soldier's funeral, sent on his way to heaven, following the path of so many heroes before him. This, our day of sacrifice and hope. The curse of the Forest of Scythe was lifted, and with it, the souls of the elves returned. King Vanir passed before Allura's return. She assumed the throne. The princess kept her promise to herself and her people. She ruled fairly and justly, guaranteeing freedom and happiness to all that lived in the land. That is not to say that there were not further perils. The forces of evil would rise again. The only hope for defending the land of Tirisbling became the support of their once sworn enemy, the Elves of Fae. Together, they would find the courage to face the imminent attack. For inside all of us, there is a hero. But that is another story.